What is going on guys? What is going on 27 squad? Welcome back in to another video and listen today we're going to get into a lot about the offensive line but first I really want to talk about this new setup we got going on here. So if you guys can't see on the camera but I installed those uh, you know those LED lights you see on TikTok and a lot of these content creators are putting up now and I, I felt it was time to upgrade the studio a little bit. Now they're cheap LED lights so obviously they don't look like they're making a big impact as uh, a lot of other ones I've seen as far as how the camera picks it up. It looks pretty nice in here but the camera kind of picks it up kind of weird but as you guys can see I mean I got this remote here I could change the colors how I so please. And I know that there's an app that comes with this thing as well. But, you know, we, we put it blue for, for the Giants. You know, when we talk about the Giants on this channel, it's going blue. But I figured when it's nighttime and, you know, I need some lighting, might as well just get, like, these things out here to kind of give this give this some character i if anybody messes with these things that watches that's watching this right now what are your best settings as far as your your face you know your face lights you know the 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 spotlights so what are your settings for do you make it bright how what's the distance you have from the camera and the led lights like how do you have those and how do you have the camera picking that up and stuff like that anybody can give me some advice on camera settings and stuff like that to make it the best possible picture possible if that makes sense, you guys let me know. Let's roll that intro. So what's going on guys? What's going on 27 squad? Welcome back into another video. And you know, today I want to talk about the offensive line, okay? And I know I make these videos like 2 years ago I made a video similar to this, but it's different this time and I and, and it really looks different this time so let's get into it before we start guys if you guys are enjoying the content if you guys are liking what you're seeing on this channel make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and also if you guys want to join the membership go ahead and join the membership it helps me out a lot as far as you know up potentially upgrading the, the you know the the content for you guys and and how I you know run this channel it all all the the proceeds go to helping out this channel so any anything would help and i appreciate you guys for doing that even just watching the video means the world to me so let's talk about this offensive line now you guys know that the offensive line is the most vital part of an offense and possibly an entire team in the nfl okay having a great offensive line can go a long long way it's going to help your quarterback play it's going to help your running backs even if you have average running backs you could help them look like beasts out there if you open up the right holes for them um it gives your wide receivers a lot of chance for production because the more time you create uh, you know for your quarterback to throw the ball to these receivers the more production your wide receivers are going to get it's going to open up the deep passing game it's going to open up you know you could you could sell the play action you can do anything you can offensively possible with a great offensive line and the Giants are well on their way to doing that you guys know Joe Shane coming from Buffalo Brian Dable coming from Buffalo as well it looks like they have a real top priority in managing this offensive line you guys can see the acquisitions just this year for the offensive line and every single one of them seem to be an upgrade whether it's it it be a depth position or a starting position the Giants upgraded in their offensive line at nearly every single position now let's we're going to use a little bit of PFF I'm not a huge PFF guy but I looked through the rankings for PFF offensive lines and if you look at the offensive line for you know PFF rankings there's always one or two bad players on great offensive lines okay one thing I, I stressed in the pot in the Young Guns podcast a couple of weeks ago is something that a lot of people don't realize to have a great offensive line you don't necessarily need all five players playing you know at all pro levels or pro bowl levels you don't need that look at the uh in the indianapolis colts offensive line look at the kansas city chiefs offensive line who upgraded f phenomenally but had some weak spots right you look at a, a lot of these gr good offensive lines they don't all have all five pieces playing 
fantastic, right? If you look at the giant situation right now, and you look at the uh, PFF grades for every single one of these players, you had Andrew Thomas coming in at left tackle, you know, 71.1. That was obviously our best graded player and the only player in the 70s at all, or anything close to 65 and over, right? Uh, you look at Matt Skura. They had uh, Matt, and we had a lot of guys rotate on that left guard position, but Matt Skura, they had listed here, had a 50.8 rating. Okay, uh, Billy Price at the center position, uh, another position that kind of got rotated a bit, 62.3, and that was our second best offensive lineman. Billy Price was our second best offensive lineman all year. Will Hernandez coming in at 55.9. We know that Will Hernandez packed up and went to Arizona, Sayonara, and obviously Nate Solder. I won't rag on Nate Solder too much because he's, you know, honestly, he's been, that, that guy's just been through a lot, but, you know, he wasn't very good either. So Nate Solder's out of here. He had a 60.2 grade. Now, if you look at the acquisitions, our projected starters this year, right? Forget about the depth pieces. We'll get, we'll get onto the depth in just a little bit. Josh Azudu, our third round pick at that left guard position, had a 77.8 uh, overall grade by PFF in college. Now, this is college, so these numbers are kind of skewed. I'm not going to say that these numbers are going to translate completely to the NFL, but I'm just giving you an idea of the upgrade that the Giants made going forward. Like, look, look, this is just this year, the upgrades that they made. Now, we take a little bit of a drop off at that center position. John Feliciano had a 56.7 grade last year. He started nine games, played in six at the center. I don't know if this is at the center position or at you know multiple positions because he played guard as well. So that could be that could be a factor. But obviously a a, a, a drop off there for John Feliciano. But then we look at Mark Glowinski, who was part of a top ten. Uh, you know, India, uh, it, it was top 12 for the P for PFF, but a top 12 or top 10 offensive line with the Indianapolis Colts. He was a big part of that 71.1 grade. Um, that it's actually pretty good. Okay, to have a 70 and over is pretty good in by PFF standards. That's how they grade their players. Um, and then you know, with that right tackle spot, Evan Neal. Now, I couldn't find an exact grade on Evan Neal. That last year at Alabama, I'm not subscribed to PFF. I'm just looking at what they post publicly uh, for, for free. And it looks like for the past two years, he had over an 83 um, flat overall grade by PFF in the past two years. So you can bet that he was obviously graded the best out of all of these players. Of course, it's college, so the numbers are kind of skewed. It's not an exact translation, but you guys can get the point there. If you look at every single position besides center where there's a bit of a drop off, Every single position was upgraded, okay? And we don't even know if John Feliciano is going to play that badly. And if, honestly, if we get just the center position to, to be the weak point and everything else to be on point, that is a huge step in the right direction. The Giants are going to take a huge leap in 2022 that I think is going to be the biggest translation, the the, the biggest, um, I guess, 180 of the position groups that we're going to see this year. You know, you can look at the linebacker position. You can look at maybe the wide receiver position with new coaches. Maybe they play, exp you know, they play uh, better. You know, you, you may look at the edge rushing group, right? The, de the defensive line, adding Kayvon Th uh, Thibodeau in there and having him with Aziz Ojolari. Those positions might all improve greatly in 2022. But if you're looking at the, the, the position group that might have the biggest improvement it's definitely the offensive line. Joe Shane stressed it this year. You got guys added depth like Max Garcia, who is, I believe, a former Pro Bowler and played many, many years, started even a lot of games last year for Arizona, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Jamil Douglas, who's a depth player for Buffalo. Uh, Marcus McKeithen, we drafted in the fifth round out of UNC, same school as Josh Zudu, and he's an absolute mauler, 340-pound beast. And uh, you look at Matt Gono, who's a decent swing tackle. Like We have depth as well, so even if some of these guys go down, we're not throwing out Billy Price out there. We're not throwing out Matt Skura out there. We're not throwing out these undrafted drafted free agent rookies that have no experience out there okay we're getting guys in here that actually have some nfl experience and like i said these are just upgrades that we made this year okay we're not this is not, not even including potential guys that can stay on this roster from last year and compete okay the giants uh completely revamped this
this offensive line, and I honestly think it can hit top 10 level this year. Just by the guys we listed here, if they play to their potential in, you know, in this year, like if Evan Neal completely has a fantastic translation to the NFL in his rookie season, uh, Andrew Thomas continues to progressively get better. You look at, you know, uh, Mark Lewinsky, who uh, was nothing short of consistently good there in Indianapolis. Josh Azudu, who looks like a steal in the third round. You know, we, we if, if we just get those guys to play up to their potential, this can definitely be a top 10 offensive line in the NFL. And this would definitely be the best offensive line the Giants have had since their Super Bowl runs, possibly in like 2007, going back that far, okay? Since then, the offensive line has just never been the same. The offensive line has never been good in the 2010s at all. It's been the biggest problem for the New York Giants for years. You Going going back to the, the, the late days of uh, Jerry Reese, in his late days, you know, his, la- his later days as GM, going into Dave Gettleman. Dave Gettleman preached the trenches, never really exactly addressed it the right way, right? Joe Shane uh, paid more attention to the offensive line in one offseason that ha- we have not played games in yet. He has, he has paid more attention to the offensive line in one offseason than possibly Jerry Reese and Dave Gettleman combined. Okay, combined in their later year. Okay, Jerry Reese from like, I would say from Jerry Reese from like 2014 to the end of his tenure and Dave Gettleman's entire tenure, the, Joe Shane paid more attention to the offensive line this offseason than those two combined in those respective years. So I'm completely on board with the New York Giants and what they're doing with this offensive line. I think it's going to make a huge turnaround in 2022. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Who's your favorite uh, acquisition from this year? Um, as far as the offensive line goes, who are you most excited about? What do you guys think the offensive line, uh, what do you think they're going to do this season? Do you think they're going to be top of the league? Do you think they're going to struggle? I want to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new. And I'll see you guys in the next video.